So as I have explained before the working of SR latch, we can check out from this truth table. The SR latch can be seen as follows. So characteristic table for active high input SR latch. When S equal to 0 and R equal to 0, Q is equal to no change. That is, latch remains in the present state, which we call care, which we call it as a hold state. Similarly, when S equal to 1 and R is equal to 0, we get output Q as 1 and Q bar is equal to 0. So we set this condition as a latch state. When S equal to 0 and R is equal to 1, which we see here. So we get the output here Q is equal to 0 and Q bar is equal to 1. Therefore, we call this as a reset state. Next, we have fourth for SR nor latch 1 1 gives 0 0 that is the complement or that is Q output and its complement are same but logically Q and Q bar cannot be same anywhere. So in SR nor latch 1 1 is considered as an invalid state. Similarly now let's consider active low input SR latch which is also called as a SR latch using NAND gate. This above active high was the SR latch using NOR gate and this one is the SR latch using NAND gate. That is, now let's work out the truth table and compare the truth table. 0 and 0, the output we can see is 1 as we have previously worked out and its complement Q bar also is 1. But logically, Q and that is output and its complement can never be the same. Therefore, uh, for SR NAND latch or active low input SR latch, 1 1 or 0 0 S dash R dash when both the inputs are 0, the condition is invalid. Now let's move on with S bar equal to 1 and R bar equal to 0. When S bar equal to 1 and R bar is equal to 0, we get the output Q is equal to 0 and its complement Q bar is equal to 1, which is a reset latch. When S bar equal to 0 and R bar is equal to 1, we get the output is equal to 1 and Q bar is equal to 0, which is a set latch. And when S bar and R bar both are 1, we get no change. That is, the output will be holding the output of the previous value. Hence, we also call it as a, a no change or whole state. The same is working what we have discussed previously using SR NAND latch or active low uh, SR latch and active high input SR latch or SR NOR latch. The same is working for SR latch. The same can be seen here. Initial state. That is when 0 and 1 the output we get is 1. When 0 and 0 the output again we get as a whole state which is a previous value 1. When 0, when 1 and 0 we get the output as 1. The same can be seen here. This is how the working of SR latch is done. Now the gated SR latch. SR latch plus enable input that is when we put an extra enable input to a latch we call it a, as a gated SR latch. SR latch plus enable input and two NAND gates are called as a gated SR latch. This circuit diagram can be seen here which has two NAND gates and these are bubbled OR gates. This bubbled OR gates also work as a NAND gate. So this is a basic diagram for gated SR latch which has two inputs S R one enable input the one output Q and the other is a complementary Q output. Now let's check out how the working of gated SR latch is. Unlike previously where the SR latch changes with the changes in the output in gated SR latch the output changes only when the enable input is high. That is, as we can see here, 
when the enable input en pin is made high or logic 1 then only the gated sr light starts working or else when the enable pin is low the gated sr latch won't work properly or won't work as per the expectations now outputs change if necessary only when enable is high now what other things we have is under what condition does the invalid state occur like in previous sr latch using nor gate and sr latch using nand gate we have seen the invalid states for sr nor latch or sr active high latch the invalid states are when both the inputs are one similarly for sr nand gates the invalid state occurs when both the inputs are zero so similarly in this condition we can just have a look or let's work out how the gated sr latch works similarly en is equal to 1 that is in this case the enable pin is already made high so the circuit will start or the gated sr latch will start its operation as per the expected when s equal to 0 or r equal to 0 we get the output as q which is a memory hold state or no change that is the output when both the inputs are 0 will be the previous output similarly when s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1 we get the output which is 0 that is a set condition so reset condition when s is equal to 0 s equal to 1 r equal to 0 is 1 that is a that is a set condition and when s equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 which is the invalid state similarly the case when let's assume when that the output the previous output q is by default 1 where in the first case we have seen the previous output is assumed to be 0 now since the previous output is assumed to be 1 let's see this so when both the inputs are 0 the output will be the previous output which is 1 rest all when 0 and 1 are the input the conditions remain the same that is when s equal to 0 r equal to 1 we get the output as 0 which is the set when s equal to 1 r is equal to 0 we get the output as 0 or as 1 which is set, set condition the previous was the reset and when s equal to 1 r equal to 1 which we get it as invalid or indeterminate still now the gated dlatch before going to the gated dlatch let's have a look at how the basic dlatch looks like or basic d flip flop looks like as flip flops are nothing but the latch with the clock pulses so we can also have a look at how the gated dlatch and its truth table is this is s this is r we complement using an odd gate that is so when s equal to 0 when input is 0 that is when we give this input as 0 s becomes 0 and r becomes 1 so as per the truth table for sr latch we get the output as 0 and 1 which is 0 called as reset state when let's say input we give it as 1 now let's consider input as 1 so when we give input as 1 s becomes 1 and r after complementing becomes 0 so in this case the output is 1 which is set condition so similarly is the gated the latch where you can see from the basic diagram this diagram s is equal to r bar or r is equal to s bar that is make r input is equal to s dash which is the gated d latch d eliminates the undesirable condition of invalid state in the sr latch so in this case d has only one input we can check it out and the second input is produced by giving it to a not gate so that it gives the complemented complemented answer of the input what we give so that is the reason why d latch eliminates the undesirable condition of invalid state in sr latch 
That is, in SR latch using NOR gate, when we had 0, 0, the output is invalid state. Uh, 1, 1, when he, we have input as 1, 1, the output is invalid state. But in this case, when we give 1, input as 1, therefore the other input automatically generates itself to its complement, that is 0, and that is how we get the output, which is not an invalid one. So the gated D latch also has the enable pin, what we can see here for. When enable is high, D is high, that is, the latch can start working. As we can see from the basic diagram, when we give your 0, when enable pin is high, first of all, that is the latch is ready to work. So when we give your zero, the other input automatically becomes one. As after passing from the NOT gate, it becomes directly one. The same is written high here. When enable is high, Q follows the D. That is the data input. When enable is high, D is high. That is the latch is set. set. When D is low, latch is reset. Hence the characteristic or uh, the table for the D latch can be referred as D is 0, output is 0, and D is 1, output is 1, call as a set state. Now, why latch circuits are not suitable or why mostly we avoid using latch circuits? Latch circuits are not suitable in synchronous logic circuits. When the enable signal is active, the excitation inputs are gated directly to the output. Thus, any change in the excitation input immediately causes a change in the latch output. That is, the latch circuits are very much unstable. The reason behind this is that when any one of the input changes, the output directly changes. That is, for example, when S and R have 0, 0, we get the output as the previous output. Now suddenly if S or R or any one of them changes, we directly get a new output which if required might be an undesirable one. So that is the reason latch circuits are not desired because they are very less sensitive and the excitation is very less for latch circuits. So the problem is solved by spatial timing controlled signal called a clock to restrict the times at which the state of the memory elements changes. That is, to avoid the unstability of the latch circuit, the basic solution is to put a clock circuit or the clock pulses in the circuit where the output will not change as per the change in the input of the latch, but the output will change as per the clock signal, so as to avoid an unexpected variation or unexpected sensitivity in the output. So, the introduction of the clocks lead us to a triggered memory element called as flip-flops.